Who did it, Sam? So let's just put one of them on an electronic scales. At this age, they weigh about 150 grams. Get down. Get down. A six week old male, 240 grams or thereabouts. So the weight increase is quite dramatic. And this will probably double again within the next six weeks. As we said earlier, all kids are born totally deaf, blind, naked and 100% dependent on their mum. They wean at about six or eight weeks, when they actually weigh between three and four hundred grams, of course dependent on sex. The canine teeth will erupt at about seven weeks, and they reach adult weight and size at about sixteen weeks, and at this stage we no longer refer to them as kits, but as ferrets. Now all things being equal, this little chap is should look after his mum until he's an adult, and he can run around and he's totally independent. However, things do sometimes go wrong. Mum sometimes dies, sometimes mum runs out of milk. Whatever kind of reasons, if you find a little like this and they've got no milk and no mum to give them milk, then you have to make a decision. Either you look after them yourself or you have them put down euthanasia. Now, if you find kids that are less than two weeks old, then you've got to remember that they take a lot of hard work. You need to be fed every two hours around the clock until they're about four or five weeks old. And if you can't do that, then the kind of thing is having put down. If, however, you are looking at having another female with a litter of about the same age, then you can place them with her, and she will often act as foster mom. But if that doesn't happen, and you decide you don't want them put down, then really it's down to you to feed them. And what you need to do is to give them some form of milk. Now, you shouldn't give them normal cow's milk. Cow's milk is fine for baby cows, not much good for baby ferrets. All it would do is scour them, give them diarrhea, and eventually would kill them. So, my own little combination mixture that has always worked well with all the animals I've reared, I mix 250 ml of water with 250 ml of evaporated milk, and then add to that the yolk of one large egg. Whisk it all together, put it into a little syringe like this, and very carefully feed the animal by just putting it in its mouth, and then squeezing very tiny drops into its mouth. Very often the animal won't want to take it and you may have to squirt a little bit extra in. But be aware that if you squirt too much in, it can actually choke them to level because too much moisture in its mouth will go down quite literally the wrong way wow. into his lungs and will drown him. These are uh, about seven weeks old, and this is the age that most people get their first ferret. Even by this age, they do have teeth that are capable of inflicting a nasty bite, but if you got them from a good breeder, they should already be aware that fingers are wonderful but aren't on the menu. Now in this bowl, we've got one of their favourite tipples. It's milk mixed with a raw egg. And all we do to reinforce the fact that fingers aren't on the menu is dip our fingers in and offer it to the ferrets. As long as they lick, that's fine. If, however, they get the idea that they can have a nibble, then all we do is, with the other finger, gently flick them at the side of the face. Very soon, they will be one and truly aware that fingers are wonderful, but aren't for them to chew. Now, this ferret's just been fed, and now we're going to have a bit of a play with him. Literally, roughhousing, rolling him over, doing all kinds of things, just like wood with a puppy or a kitten, and generally treating him as a little pet and letting him know that we're not going to hurt him, we are just playing and he'll treat us like another ferret kit so he'll occasionally grab hold of our fingers with his mouth and that's acceptable as long as he doesn't try biting like that, that's a nibble, that's fine he's not really intending anything but if he starts nibbling a bit too hard again we simply flick him at the side of the nose and let him know, no you can't do that, you can't get away with that generally play around as much as possible with them the more play you can do at this stage with a ferret, the better the adult ferret will be. Some people will get a ferret when it's this kind of age, an adult. This is a Jill. Wow. If it comes from a good breeder, then she should be right. perfectly safe and shouldn't want to bite. The idea with any ferret is to have an animal that is tame enough 
for you to be able to put your finger in its mouth like that without any fear of being bitten whatsoever. If, however, you've had one brought in that's been living wild for a while, or has come from an unknown background and will snap at you, you have to be able to pick the ferret up and hold it in a manner that you won't be in any risk of being bitten. The best way to do that is finger and thumb under the arms, other three fingers around the top of the arms, so you've got her like that. She can't bite you now. Support her weight with the back end, like that. And if she does a little bit uptight, as she's doing now, we'll relax her. And the best way to do that is like this. Literally just swinging her through the one hand, and you can see how relaxed she becomes straight away. Once you've got her like that, and you're holding her and you relax her, we're now going to teach her not to bite. Offer the knuckles towards her. Knuckles are offered rather than the ends of the fingers, because there's not enough flesh for them to get hold of on the knuckles. If she tries to bite, move your hand out of the way very quickly and gently slap her side of the face. And then relax her again. We give her knuckles, she tries to bite, she gets slight slap, she gets relaxed again, and so on until eventually you put your knuckles there, and at that stage, rather than trying to bite, she turns away. Now when she does that, she's probably realised that if she does bite, she's going to get pain as well. And once you start to think like that, you're on the road to having a nice, tame ferret. It's worth bearing in mind that when you keep any animals in captivity, there's always the possibility that one of them will be injured. It could be through fighting between each other, it could be that they either fall or any kind of accident. When that happens, it's down to you to make sure that they're looked after properly. You need to practice first aid. You obviously need to have... And it's worth bearing in mind that if you've got human first aid qualifications, they can be applied just as easily to any animals. The basics of first aid are literally ABC. Airways, breathing, circulation. If you have an animal that's unconscious, check that the airways are open, make sure that it's then breathing, and then check its heart. Once all that's going, that's fine, we can move on to the next thing, which is usually bleeding. And it must be addressed in that order. It's pointless stopping bleeding if the animal can't breathe, because it might stop the bleeding, but the animal will still be dead. So we need to tackle it in the right order. We also need the first aid kit. And you don't have to spend a fortune on a first aid kit. Simply get yourself a small tin like this one and put into it the items that you believe are useful. In here are a few of the things that I personally use but at the end of the day it's down to what you feel happy with. But there are good and bad items and good and bad designs. Let's take first of all tweezers. Tweezers are very useful. You can use them for removing animal stings like bee stings etc.